Australia Accounting, Auditing and Finance Federation in Australia. You have been asking me a lot, uh, bring some Australia videos, what's the career in Australia, how we can move over there, etc, etc. So today I have with me my old friend Murtaza. There's another video with him on the Scotland side and other stuff as well. You can watch that video as well. But this video is purely for the Australia perspective. What we are going to talk about in this video is scope for qualified, unqualified, uh, how you can move, how you can search the job, life there, etc, etc, a lot of stuff. Basically, that's relevant for your career, for your career path, for your journey in future. I'll ask Mutta to introduce himself. Hi, thank you, Prem. Hi, this is me, Murtaza. I am working currently with PwC Australia as a senior associate, which is obviously next to manager already. And uh, I have had another interview before for uh, KPMG Edinburgh earlier as an assistant manager. Yeah, uh, so it has been a nice journey with Australia so far. And I've completed my six months over here. Right, cool. Uh, we'll deep dive into very important questions which somebody really asks. Let's first talk about unqualified candidates. Qualified candidates have a lot of places to go, UK, USA, Middle East. What about Australia? Is it is there a scope on qualified and qualified both? Yes, there is a lot of scope for the unqualified, both qualified and unqualified uh, uh, candidates like in australia there is no such requirement for for you to be ca qualified or ssa qualified even if you are uh, just kf qualified you can and you have uh, at least three years of experience uh, you can apply for the jobs you can um, either reach out to anyone on linkedin or uh, go to the portals of the firms of the big six firms uh, you can apply for them uh, but you just have to look for the jobs which uh, has an option that okay they are ready to sponsor because there are uh, multi you can find multiple jobs on the portal one of the one job will can have the sponsorship option yes yeah, as a yes other one can have no not available right. so if we conclude then of course there is a possibility if you unqualified there's a way out over there now it's a matter of understanding. Is there sponsorship at the back? If there is sponsorship, then if you're a qualified candidate, you can compete with, oh, sorry, if you're unqualified candidate, then you can compete with a qualified person as well, then it's fine, got a chance. But yeah, your experience and, is not uh, good. Yeah, I uh, just want to make sure one thing, like when we talk about the Middle East, there is always a gap between qualified and unqualified salaries. There is no gap over here. It is based on your experience and uh, the like the sector in which you are uh, applying the experience in that uh, so on this respect for visa as you mentioned there's no requirement right no qualification doesn't matter uh somebody like me i'm not a graduate i don't I haven't done any bcom or anything like that so what's in for somebody who doesn't have anything just art started the article shape after their uh, c enter and now want to abroad so is there a chance for that person yes there is no such requirement for the bachelor's degree uh, to apply for the visa but yet again i have uh, come across uh, some situations like my friend had a situation with uh, some of the one of the big four that who was asking uh, for the bachelor's degree so uh, but uh, currently i'm in pwc and there are many people who don't doesn't have a bachelor's degree or the or and not qualified and they are in uh, working in Australia. So it varies from firm to firm and uh, basically from for the visa, the kind of uh, visa they are uh, applying for you. So my current visa is uh, uh, 482 and a uh, few other firms are uh, giving you some other kind of visas. So it depends. I'm glad it's not charts of visa. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because um, Australian immigration is uh, really strict regarding uh, the requirements and so much stricter than yeah. uk for sure for sure this yes is much stricter than uk and yeah everybody who is probably working from i don't know india or pakistan mostly uh the the institute of Char accountants of england uh, not england the australia new zealand usually have a pathway for both ici and icap members to to be a member of the institute to through to find pathways i have a video on my channel if you want to look at that so that can help you now, the other question is who usually hires in Australia from abroad 
top four, top six? What do you think from their perspective? Because what I Australia know, is a big market, right? It's, it's a limited market, and opportunities are limited. There are local people, there are international people. So, what does it look like? What I have uh, noticed that they are majorly hiring like on the senior uh, level and above. They are hiring from the extra like abroad, and uh, they are targeting mostly the big four candidates. Even uh, let's suppose if someone was working in uh, big four in Pakistan and have moved to a mid tier firm in uh, Dubai or any Middle Eastern country, they still uh, consider them. And uh, because there is a lot of, uh, you know, Australia was closed for almost two years. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of uh, huge demand for auditors. So if you are a right candidate, you have a right experience, they are even taking uh, candidates uh, which have a gap of uh, one year mm -hmm. uh, from the audit. Like they have uh, either went into advisory or uh, went for the uh, industry, but no, not when we see the normal jokes on internet. Auditors will be replaced, etc. And they the people don't know how much in demand or the auditors around the world. It's one of the profession you can just move anywhere. So we are exactly. not being replaced by machines. Okay, that's helpful to know. So I'm just thinking about candidates because Australia is a very limited market. So anybody who's watching, let's say somebody from mid tier or small firm, we are not saying you are bad, right? You are you have, you have skills. But when it's a limited market and applicants are much higher, then of course you the firms give recognition to the brand name first. Uh, then skills. Uh, if if both of you candidates, let's say one candidate from big four and you have the similar set of skills, of course brand name will prevail. And that person will be considered further before you. So it's not a matter uh, that you are bad, etc. It's just a matter. It's a very limited market in Australia. So we have seen a lot of people just moving through big force over there. Uh, and if you're in small firms, there are, of course, ways to navigate through join big four for a while. Let's say one year, etc. There are ways around there. But preference goes to the candidates from the big four usually uh, in this market. Uh, one more thing which I will add is. Uh people who has uh, experience in banking financial services especially banking have a very uh, more chance than other candidates i always say that everywhere in the world fs guys usually have, get better chances uh, yeah. because a lot of big countries have financial hubs around the world and there's a demand for, for the people out there Thank you so much for this. This and now talk about a bit about salaries as well. We we touched upon there's a equivalent kind of a salary. There's not much difference in qualified and qualified. But what does an average salary look like for somebody who is probably hired at senior level or let's say AM level and somebody who has experience of let's say three to four years? What do you think? Okay, if we um, the normal salary, which is uh, uh, the current market salary in Australia, is for the senior or the AM. Like in PwC, there is no AM, and uh, it's just next to manager. Mm -hmm. So for the senior one, the salary ranges between ninety to ninety five, mm -hmm. and um, for the assistant, oh, sorry, for the manager, it's around one fifteen and one twenty. Right. It's and a range, of course, you have to negotiate. And I remember yeah. when I was offered job in Deloitte Australia in twenty nineteen. I was offered probably eighty nine as a as a yeah just one below one position below the manager level, so pretty much I think they haven't changed much to be fair. It should have increased with inflation though. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's but just gives it gives you a range. Big four firms don't really deviate too much from each other. Maybe a couple of thousands around here and there, but not like yeah, exactly. fifteen thousands away from each other. Um, people can have uh, like more salary in KPMG or some other big four. Uh, that I am not uh, very much sure, but the normal range uh, it, it is between uh, nineteen ninety five for the uh, senior awesome. Now you have been through Scotland as well. Uh, you have been in the Middle East as well, so you know the salaries, cost of living, etc. How now that's again linking with the expenses you usually face across different locations, and then what what you say because ultimately somebody who is moving abroad. One of the biggest aim, apart from post passport, everybody knows that we can't deny it, is to make sure you earn and save something for yourself. Maybe something to send to your family back home, etc. So, what what is the cost of living and the net financial position look like? Yeah, see, if you talk about uh, savings, 
like uh, obviously middle east you get a lot of savings over there but uh, we all know that there is no passport so we ultimately we just leave middle east for the western country yeah that's what i'm clearly tell everybody right uh, we can't say it's not for the passport exactly. one of the reasons is there yeah but the uh, lifestyle which we get over here and uh, the facilities which are available here uh, it's good to be here in uh, australia the the thing is uh, major for in terms of if i talk about passport because people ask me how many years does it take to get the citizenship so in australia the rule is the general rule is if you're working with one employer uh, for 3 years consecutive 3 years so they can refer you for uh, permanent residency uh, and uh, within one year of uh, permanent pr you get uh, citizenship so and uh, for other things what you and i think in uk it's after 5 years right so on in australia when i was doing some research in past i heard depends on cities as well some in some cities it's easier to get a pr while some other cities you it's, it's bit difficult what's the difference in that okay the thing is uh, it's about regional uh, areas if you are in regional area there are more state level uh, sponsorships state level points available that's why they say that it's easier to get it like if somebody is in uh, uh like want to come here on a study visa or is not well educated enough so they target the regional areas for their study mm-hmm. because uh for that they get easily uh, the visas but for uh, the skilled ones and like uh, i'm a muslim like where the people the most are the desi people the indians the pakistanis mm-hmm. so those are in the melbourne and uh, sydney the well known areas mm-hmm. so they target over there Yeah. but for the students they do target regional areas because they get visas very easily yeah they need a lot of points to qualify for the extra exactly so and i think uh, currently uh, in december and now they have just resumed the invitations they have uh, drastically reduced the points for all uh, professions like i heard that for auditor in order to apply for the pr uh, you needed uh, 100 plus points now it's around 80 okay well everybody is facing shortage of labor across the uh, across the world so if they are trying to try to bring people from, from other countries now getting back to the cost perspective uh, we all know there's not much saving in australia uk or let's say any western countries but still what does it look like for a single person i know you heard what single but uh, what is can it look like for a single person and somebody in the family see i when i was moving to uk i heard from people that there is no saving okay and uh, similarly when i was moving here i heard the same so it's not like that you it depends on you if you are some foodie and you just want to roam around the city so you won't have any uh, savings in your hand but if you just like go out uh, twice or thrice in a month and you can have some dinners weekly you can still live a good life over here you can save it it depends on the person how you are is it fair to say let's say if you are saving 1000 in what do you call australian dollars a dollar daily yeah uh, if you're saving australian dollar 100 1000 australian dollars in uae you will probably be saving like 300 australian dollars in australia as in as a comparison um you can say 500 at least this is a good good amount uh, it's not yeah, a bad amount but again depends on lifestyle if you want to go every day exactly. uh, have 500 dollars worth of stuff kind of a fancy food of course there will be no savings left exactly exactly cool that's awesome now very important thing i think a lot of people are really concerned about this especially in australia people here there's more like racism uh, it is everywhere but we really hear in media as well australia have a bit more on that side people are less tolerant that's what we hear what is your perspective on that i will i will disagree on that because i haven't come across this i am here for 6 months and uh, have been going to office and people are really nice over here see in every 10 uh, people you will find one odd person so that's not uh, like we call the whole nation as a uh, racist and uh, for the uh, big cities like sydney and melbourne there is no such problem 
but obviously there might be some issues in the some small cities like where the population of the locals is uh, much higher but not it's a good country my friend is in adelaide so i haven't heard anything from him cool now very again very broad question why anybody should move to australia there are a lot of lot of places in the world right <laughs> what's the best thing about australia or something that really is good see for me to moving to australia the number one reason was i have a family over here and number two the weather in uk was very harsh it was unbearable for me like i was in edinburgh and uh, for in six months during my stay there was only one sun, sunny day only and every rest all the days there was only continuous raining so uh, well uh number 2 is the there is a, the weather is really good over here like if you are from karachi pakistan uh, then it's an the city is the best city for you mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of beaches as well as i understand yes yes uh, i have heard that 13000 beaches are there in australia i haven't been to any yet no i went to wollongong beach yeah and especially i think even in sydney there are more than 365 so people say you know even if you do go one one beach a day they're not going to come in one year yes that's what i heard from somebody in australia all right yeah. now back to getting back to one uh, last question on the big four stuff again now we know there are jobs and stuff like that so how should somebody really start their journey uh, in terms of searching and applying for any job what are the uh, key recommendations or best steps for somebody to really uh, secure a job okay uh, see uh, what they are doing over here is they are like in uk it is the same also that you have uh, in middle east and pakistan we uh, work on the mixed portfolio but over here they are targeting uh, the specialized people like if somebody has uh, banking and mutual funds experience so his cv should uh, like show the skills and his experience uh, working in those areas uh, besides you can aid other areas but other clients as well from other sectors but it should uh, predominantly uh, focus on the banking and the mutual funds and he should apply on those areas only and one thing what i would say is when you are going to apply on the port uh, through the portal you should be uh, like uh, careful that you just apply on the relevant fi- uh, jobs like what we uh, people normally do is they see okay these are senior associate jobs they just apply randomly when you are applying randomly uh, the one thing which uh, the hiring uh, team uh, gets confused is okay the person is not sure whether which city he is going to work or what sector he wants to work in so because these are some basic questions when you get a call in australia what i have noticed is uh, you get rejected on uh, hr call as well that can happen i think that's really really important point i probably emphasized in past as well don't apply the same kind of three to four jobs in the same department same kind of a team was i mean high man just can be different but that's say for two of those jobs if somebody was a bad the back knowing that you applied on two jobs and they will just reject from both because you don't, they don't know are you really sure enough to to be here etc so always apply one job tailor your cv or do that and apply that But this is one approach right portal uh, there there's a lot on linkedin right we all, we all know linkedin is a really powerful place to, to search for jobs so any recommendations on that perspective as well yeah uh, there are jobs available on the linkedin as well but uh, when you are going through the portal so you just uh, create the file once only so if there are uh, like referrals and stuff like that you, you find people on linkedin of course so yes. from australia etc so does that really matter that's the play role because the reference you will yes. begin it does the process it does it does because uh, i don't know because i have seen it has been 6 months only i referred like i don't know how many people <laughs> i don't remember maybe 10 12 people and uh, all of them received a call so after receiving the it's not in my hand it's just a referral portal uh, referral uh, portal where i just put the cvs and uh, if it is my friend i just put it okay he's my friend or either the linkedin acquaintance so they just get a call and from that i just try to guide them 
what they ask or <clears throat> how they have to uh, frame their answers but if they uh, some people get through some people doesn't that's so it depends on, uh, yeah that's a luck and also few people are very rigid in <laughs> their uh, approach so i can't do much with them you know i think there's been the helpful I, i'll probably uh, say something in the end around uh, reaching out on linkedin probably i i, I mean of course you if you're qualified you have that experience reach out to us we can help but make sure when you're reaching out you are talk, explaining why you are that candidate for the role uh, why you qualify uh, send your cv and not like hi sir i need a job so that doesn't work i i receive thousands of messages nowadays i i can't respond or probably with the can't as well to all the messages so if you're really searching for jobs be very specific when reaching out and uh, people are happy to refer but uh, refer and i probably have put 50 people in the last four years as well so it's not like that but be careful to reach out and that probably have posted on linkedin as well today don't shoot cvs and then work with our context <laughs> be careful yeah exactly and uh, one thing i just want to say i'm not an immigration consultant so <laughs> people who doesn't meet the criteria don't ask me uh, that how can we move to australia and previously they were asking me about uk or something i don't know about the immigration process i can just can guide you when you are in pwc or any of the uh, firms i know that process only because that's we always uh, come on the same visa awesome that's been the area for any final comments before we close this session uh nothing much uh, just uh keep applying don't get more uh, demotivated because i heard people said okay i gave it everything it was up to the mark and they rejected me okay it's part of life just apply on another job and you will get through yeah, i mean simple as that i was rejected in ey australia's third interview i think it was the third interview and in the deloitte australia i was selected in 15, 20 minutes one interview only at a much higher salary so it just, it just works out exactly it's not bad Awesome, Rutra. Thank you for joining today. Thank you.